Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to women's realm and the magazine industry. This video is relevant for you if you are an Educast Media Studies A-level student. Magazines could pop up on component two, section B. Um, women's realm is just one of the optional set texts, so please don't worry if your school does not study this. But if you are studying women's realm, you will also be studying Huck magazine. I do have separate videos about Huck and TCO London, the company that make them as well, so please check those out. This video is gonna be focusing on Women's Realm and the company that made it, which was IPC. So IPC Media um, was, and I guess is, even though it's in a different form now, a very big company. Uh, it's very mainstream, it's quite a large conglomerate. Um, it made a lot of magazines. They had quite a big boom of magazines that they were making in the 50s and 60s. It was a post-war period. And um, if you know anything about that post-war 50s and 60s period, it meant that Britain was going through this time of a kind of economic boom for the most part after the war. Lots of people had more disposable income that they'd never had before. And people were spending that money on, you know, trying to look better and feel better. And, um, you know, particularly um, women after that war, they wanted to kind of um, show that they had, um, they had things, they had material possessions that were going to make them, um, you know, the envy of all their friends and to show that their family had status and power after that wartime period. So lots of people started to buy magazines in general because magazines were a way of getting information about how you could improve, how you could make yourself more beautiful or more smart or a better mother or whatever it was. Um, so magazines were very much used as a kind of guide to how to live your life and a lot of people were buying them. IPC actually had a huge range of magazines that they were making at the time and women's magazines, women's weekly magazines were um, a kind of market that they basically dominated. They made several women's weekly magazines that were huge. One of the magazines that IPC made at the time was a magazine called Woman, which was a weekly women's magazine. Woman was an incredibly popular magazine, very, very popular. Um, it was selling three million copies a week, which made it kind of the biggest women's weekly magazine at the time. So they were doing really well with it. And you kind of have to think, well, why would they choose to make another magazine? Why would they choose to make Woman's Realm when they already had this very popular magazine? And I guess it's that idea of, um, you know, Curran and Seaton, um, Hesmond Haug, think about those industry related theorists, that idea that it's all about profit. If you know you've got an incredibly successful product that is making you a lot of money and essentially has cornered the market, why not make something very similar in an attempt to add even more profit? Um, you know, perhaps those people that buy women will also buy your Women's Realm magazine. So they started Women's Realm magazine basically to try and increase their profits. They had a printing press, they actually owned their own printing press called Odoms. And that meant they're vertically integrated as a company because they're not just writing the magazine, but they're also able to print it. So they're doing more than one stage of that production process themselves. So um, this printing process, um, the actual plant where they printed the woman magazine, it had the capacity to print more, but um, there's no, there was no point printing more woman magazines because they were already selling as much as they could of women. But they thought, well, why not use the printing plant, the, the you know factory, to print another magazine and then hopefully we can sell that as well. So Woman's Realm was introduced um, basically to make more money out of an already existing successful model. Woman's Realm was very similar to Woman's Magazine. It was still a weekly women's magazine. It still featured lots of weekly advice, you know, beauty, fashion, how to be a great mum, how to look after the home, um, how to be a great wife. So there was a lot of advice for women. It did what it what, what they wanted it to do. It sold really, really well. Woman's Weekly was popular for decades. So your historical set text cover, um, you know, came out in the 1960s. It would have been an incredible popular magazine at that time. It did carry on being a very popular magazine um, title for years and years. Um, you know, women still wanted that kind of friendly, um, best friend type atmosphere from their magazines and they wanted advice about how to look good and how to be a great wife and mother. 
What happened though was that over time sales did start to decline. Um, when you kind of got into the 1980s, you know, think about the fact that women had a bit more power, there were more equality laws in the 80s, you know, that things weren't brilliant but they were a lot better for women than they had been in the 1940s, 50s and 60s. And so you had more women going out to work. There was this idea of kind of the power woman, you know, going off to work and, and being able to earn her own money. Um, and so um, I think the magazine sales started to decline. Um, you know, that women, it became more acceptable for women not to have to get married so early. Um, women were delaying having children. And so I suppose the content in women's realm started to feel a bit old fashioned to a lot of women at the time. So in the 80s, the sales started to decline quite a lot. Um, and what that meant was that IPC had to come up with a way of trying to boost sales. So in 1989, they completely redesigned Women's Realm um, and they tried to make it a bit more glamorous. So they were trying to bring in new sales and they were trying to attract people back to that Women's Realm brand. It didn't go brilliantly because a couple of years later in 1991, they had to do the same thing again. So, you know, less than sort of two, three years later, they had to do another restyle of the magazine in an attempt to bring in more audiences. And, um, you know, those audiences are important, don't forget, because the more readers you have, then the more attractive you are for advertisers. And if advertising companies, if brands feel that not enough people are reading your magazine, they just simply won't buy the advertising space inside it. And so it wasn't just the fact that audiences weren't reading the magazine, it's that their advertising sales were dropping as well. So Women's Realm started to become their kind of least popular magazine that they were selling at the time. Um, so they had other women's magazines that were doing a lot better. And again, this ties into this idea of, you know, industries, media industries being all about profit and power. They had to make a decision based on the fact that they had one magazine that was really not coping and other magazines that were doing a lot better. And so um, what they decided to do was basically cut their losses and they shut down Women's Realm and merged it with um, their Women's Weekly magazine that they also made at the time. Um, so they kind of got the staff that were working on Women's Realm to move across to uh, Women's Weekly. Some of the content from Women's Realm then ended up in Women's Weekly, um, but they had a plan. They felt like the older audiences, the people who were reading that were perhaps a lot older in age, would start to read Women's Weekly. But then they launched a new, more youthful magazine um, to try and um, attract those younger audiences. So they launched a magazine called Your Life which they hoped would attract those younger audiences who were finding that Women's Realm was too old fashioned. So what they did when in that last issue of Women's Realm, before it was merged completely and before it shut down, they put coupons in for audiences so that audiences who bought that final magazine could then use their coupons to buy Women's Weekly or Your Life. So they were trying to kind of cross promote their other titles and, and try and ensure that um, you know, they were still going to be making profit from those readers. So it's kind of clever business decisions that meant that if something was failing, you try your best to make it work. And if that's not working, you cut your losses, shut it down and put all the rest of your profits and money into something else that is working. And the magazine industry really is all about money. Um, as most media industries are, you know, who has the money has the power. So IPC itself was bought out by a company called Reed in 1970. Um, and they then sold the company um, to a company called Sinven in 1998. Um, and then it became IPC Media. So Sinven called it IPC Media. Sinven then sold um, the company again in 2001, this time to Time Inc, who are a subsidiary of Time Warner, very big global corporation. Um, and in 2014, um, they um, became Time Inc UK. So um, they were still making all their normal titles, but they kind of rebranded the company to become Time Inc UK. Um, but then in 2018, um, they Time, U, uh, Time Warner sold them to um, a company called the Meredith Corporation, um, who sold it less than a month later um, to um, Epirus, and they who then turned the company from um, Time Inc UK into TI Media, so it was rebranded again. 
Um, so it's all these companies bidding for IPC, renaming it, rebranding it, bringing it into their company because they knew how successful IPC was. It was desirable as a company. Everyone wanted it within their company. They wanted to sort of buy it out, horizontally integrate it into their products because then they could make the profits. It was then in 2020 sold to Future PLC and um, uh, they are now known as Future PLC. Um, so the name IPC Media doesn't really exist anymore, but the company itself and all the magazines they currently make are kind of under that Future PLC banner. So it kind of just goes to show you that if you are a successful company, you have to make quite difficult decisions. And that if you are a successful company making a lot of very successful products and a lot of revenue, you will become desirable to other companies who will want to buy out your organisation. Um, and it's a, it's a bidding war, essentially. Um, and who knows where that company will get sold to next? I don't know. Um, but it just goes to show you that the magazine industry is very much all about profit and power. So that was my easy to understand guide to women's realm and the magazine industry. Don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe. I've got lots of other videos about women's realm, about Huck magazine, and indeed about all the other set texts for both GCC and A-level media studies. And don't forget, if you need any other videos that I don't already have, drop me a, a comment below and I will see what I can do.